All right, this video is about synthetic division of polynomials. We're taking a little a day break from the rational functions and graphing, and I want to show you how to do synthetic division, which we will use in our graphing of rational functions tomorrow. So you've got to learn this skill before you can do the next. All right, so the form looks like this. You have this giant polynomial divided by another polynomial. Now notice, this polynomial back here is linear, x to the first power. So it's just linear, so that makes this possible. If this is not linear, you cannot use synthetic division, and you have to use long division, which is way more complicated. So we're going to focus on dividing by linears. Now, the form of this looks like this. You put this little box here, and then you bring down the coefficients in order. Now notice the exponents are in order here, third, second, first, and this is like x to the zero power, but notice they go in descending order. They have to be in descending order for this to work. But what I pull into my division problem is the coefficients. So I put a, b, c, and d. Those are the coefficients of my x terms. Notice that, okay? And then I put over here, I pretend like I solved this. Okay, x minus k equals zero. We need to add k to both sides. So x is k. So what I put over here is k. What you need to remember is remember you just change the sign of k. Just like we did with factors, if we had x minus 4, we set it equal to 0. We said essentially what happens is the sign changes. That's what's happening here. We're just using a letter to represent it. All right, so that's how you set it up. I'm going to show you how to work it through, but I'm not going to keep doing it with letters to keep you from being confused. But that's the general setup of the problem. Exponents have to go in order. You bring down the coefficients and you divide by whatever x is given by the divisor. All right, let's try one. Look at this. Okay, let's analyze your polynomial here. Do my exponents go in order? I've got four. I don't have a three, so I need to keep in mind I need a zero, x to the third, x squared, x to the first, and four. So when I set up my problem, I'm going to put the coefficient here as a one. I need to put x to the third in there, so I put a placeholder of zero. The coefficient of x squared is negative 10. The coefficient of x is negative 2. And then this last constant is a 4. Now, what am I dividing by? Well, x plus 3 equals 0. If I solve it for x, x is negative 3. That's what I'm dividing by. All right, so how does this work? OK, you bring that first number down, straight down. And then you multiply. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Add 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Now I multiply again. Negative 3 times negative 3 gives me a positive 9. Add down. Negative 10 plus 9 is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 3 is a positive 3. Negative 2 plus 3, writing down, is positive 1. Multiply. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. One times 4 minus 3 is 1. All right, now this last term over here is the remainder, and I'll show you what to do with that. But so how does this come out with an equation? Well, you had x to the fourth and you divided an x out. So it's one less than x to the fourth. So this is x cubed. And then you go down x squared, x. And that's a plus because it's positive. And this would be x to the zero, but we don't care about that. It's just nothing. It's the constant. So my answer looks like this. y equals x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 1. Now, the way I show this remainder, notice the 1 is positive, so I'm going to say plus 1, but it's a fraction. It's 1 over the original divisor, okay? So it goes 1 over x plus 3. And that is what the solution will look like, okay? Let's try another one. Look at this one. All right, check out your exponents. It goes 3, 2, 1, 0. So they are in order. Put my coefficients in, 5, 8, negative 1, 6, and i got to divide by x. Well, what is x? x is negative 2. And you'll get to where you don't have to solve that. You just know you're flipping the sign. But until you understand that, keep solving. So let's start this. First term just goes straight down. Multiply. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. 8 minus 10 is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. 3 times negative 2 negative 6. Right? Add that up. 0. So I have 0 remainder. That's cool. 
Now, again, what power goes with this 5? Well, it's 1 less than what you started with. So it was x cubed. Now it's x squared, x, and then my constant. So my equation is 5x squared minus 2x plus 3. No remainder because it didn't have one. All right? Let's try this one. Notice my exponents. x to the x cubed and then no x's. Well, what happened here? I need a placeholder for x squared if I count down. 0 to the x power and then a constant. So I counted down. 3, 2, 1, x is 0. So my coefficients are negative 1, 0, 0, and 4. All right, what am I going to divide by? Well, what is x? It's negative 2. All right, so let's finish this out. First number goes straight down, then I multiply. Negative 1 times negative 2 is 2. Add them, get a 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Add them, negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. So I add them, and I get 12. All right, this is my remainder. So let's think about what power of x goes in this first term. Well, it's 1 less than what I started with. I started with cubed, so I have to go squared, plus x minus 4. So my equation will be negative x squared plus 2x minus 4, and it's a positive 12, so it's going to be positive 12 over, what was the divisor? x plus 2. Okay, that's the way the answer will look. Okay, on your own, I want you to try this one. We'll start here when we go in class, and we'll see you then.